Today's Saturday. It's a gorgeous day. Sun, blue sky, and I'm stuck indoors because um, this is the day after my last post ended and basically been indoors for the entire three days just crashing out some work um, to get on, uh, some items onto my shop onto my Shopify store uh, link in the description below if you fancy having a look at what I do um, but today I have a delivery coming from Royal Mail it's a tracked service and the only safe place I have for a package to be left if I wanted to instruct them is one of my wheelie bins and that doesn't count apparently so I'm going to have to wait in. Today I really wanted to go out because I haven't been out in three days. I went out, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, just to put a vintage package into one of the impost boxes so I wasn't out for more than about 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, I have not been out. Although I have been opening the windows, so fresh air has been a thing. So I'm desperate to get outside now, and I'm waiting in for the post office. And of course, when you go online and look at the tracking, it tells you nothing at all. I had an email saying that it would arrive today, but now when I go into the tracking, it's not telling me anything at all. According to the tracking, it's still in Leeds, because they don't update it until they've tried to deliver. It's a completely useless tracking service, which is no surprise from the Royal Mail. You won't get that with other tracking services. Uh, so I'm just kind of waiting in and I'm going to get on with some more work, I guess. Um, because, you know, there's no point in just sitting around wasting time. So that's going to be today, really. I was going to go over and do my cleaning today just to get it out of the way, really. Because I just really wanted to go out and do something constructive and useful. So depending on what time... The post office uh, Royal Mail actually delivers, presuming that they're going to. I may still go over. Um, I don't know how long. I guess Saturday could be delivered any time, just like any other time. Uh, so if not, I'll be going over and doing that tomorrow, Sunday, as I usually would, because normally I go and do my Sunday morning Morrison's Hall when they open at 9.30, and then I go straight over and do the cleaning. So... Just have to wait in and see. It's really frustrating because it's really nice out there and I just like to get out. So instead I'm just going to get on and be constructive again and do something do something useful. Because the more stuff that's in my shop, the more chances I have of making some money. And if you're looking for unusual gifts, that's the place to go. Because um, everything I make is a one-off. And I have bills to pay. <laughs> As we all do. So, uh, yeah, so that's Saturday so far. So, fingers crossed I don't have to wait until about 6 o'clock this evening for Royal Mail to deliver. Wish me luck. The business that I do the cleaning for throws out a lot of stuff that's useful. They're pretty wasteful. I've rescued all sorts of things from the bins. Blocks of paper. Uh, loads of packaging. I get loads of free packaging from them where they just lob everything in the bin. And the other day I noticed this in the bins, the big bin outside. And I know what's in here because this sat on one of their tables for a couple of weeks and I thought, I wonder what they're going to do with all those. And then it's all in the bin. Unbelievable. So this bag needs fixing. Now I've fixed these bags before, um, I have a semi-industrial sewing machine so it's easy, easy for me to sew through this plastic. This is great for storage, but inside it is the following. Ikea bags, big ones. Two. Oh, there's a small one. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, eight, probably used once Ikea bags. These things are great for storage. I have three, I think it is at the moment, um, which I've adopted over time. I've never shopped, well I have shopped in Ikea, but I've never had an Ikea bag. And there are loads of these things. So, 
I can really use these because a lot of the bags, um, like recycled um, packaging and stuff like that, is now just sitting in boxes or in plastic bags so I can start to bundle it up properly it makes it easier for me to store until I need it and easier for me to grab a bag so I'm going to put all of my um, packaging into some of these bags and then just keep these for whatever I might need them for what a waste can you imagine all that just going in the bin they're basically free bags for life and I've got about 20 free bags for life. I've never bought a bag for life. But they get thrown out so often. People treat them like plastic bags. What's the point in paying like a pound or whatever you pay for a bag for life and then throwing it out? Because the whole point of them was to stop that problem. But people still throw stuff out. So I've acquired lots of bags and I'm happy about that. Um, but my God, some places are so wasteful. Anyway, so I'm going to get on with that and start having a little tidy up in my studio of uh, packaging that's just everywhere. I've got small boxes, all the packaging that's mostly come from my parents and then I just kind of shove it in a corner in a black sack or something. So I really need to work on that. So that's, that's this morning job. Uh, while I'm still waiting for the Royal Mail to deliver, it's now lunchtime. I'm going to do this, then I'm going to have some lunch and I'm really hoping they do actually turn up today because it's getting a bit frustrating because I really wanted to get out today. Anyway, there we go. Bye. It's Sunday morning and I woke up and got up at 7.30 this morning because the clocks changed last night. So theoretically it is now 7.30 even though I actually woke up at the same time as usual. Uh, got an extra hour's sleep into the bargain and it's really nice because Sunday is another blue sky day so I'm feeling productive. Um, so I think I'm going to start going to bed an hour earlier and going to bed at 10 and seeing if that will get me up earlier because me in the mornings are really struggling. I don't remember struggling as much as this. Maybe I always have. But 8.30 is my current waking up point and in the summer I naturally wake up 7, 7.30, sometimes even earlier if it's lovely. And now I've just slipped right into 8, 8.30 and it's a real struggle. Anyway, so morning coffee. So being as I'm up and doing stuff, I'm going to go over and start doing my clean early. And then at 9.30 I will go over to Morrison's, do my usual Sunday morning haul, if there's anything there. And then carry on finishing off my cleaning after that. Um, my parcel did not arrive yesterday. And in fact, despite it saying it was going to deliver on Saturday, they updated the tracking on it late yesterday. And it had only reached my area delivery port, my delivery hub, about 20 to 7 last night. So it wasn't a wasted day. I wasn't literally just sitting around and I didn't have to go out. Um, I wanted to do the cleaning yesterday, but it wasn't a big deal because normally I do it Sunday anyway. So I got on and just did some work. I did made some more, um, more of those bangles I've been talking about and did a load of admin and bits and pieces so it was not a wasted day um it was just a bit frustrating uh, i don't know if they're going to try and deliver today i've given up caring i'm just going to go about my day and if they try to deliver then they either have to come back or i go to the sorting office i don't know which is which um don't really care i would imagine as it's sunday they now won't deliver and um it'll turn up tomorrow and Monday, I don't particularly have to be anywhere. Um, I haven't made my list of things to do yet on Monday. So I may well wait in. It depends on the weather as well. If the weather's really terrible, I'll stay in anyway. So, Sunday morning begins. Uh, and let's be productive. Cheers. Alright, so I'm back from my Sunday cleaning and Morrison's haul did quite well today but this shop is slightly different because I didn't have to pay for any of this so I did a marketing survey a um, couple of weeks ago maybe three weeks ago and I got paid for that this week so I got seven pounds and that seven pounds had to be cashed in as a gift voucher and I went for Morrison's because 
that's where it'll get spent. So I had seven pounds and today I theoretically spent five pounds and a penny. So that's five pounds and a penny I didn't actually spend. So we've had a good haul. It's a relatively healthy haul, which is good. Quite a lot in today. So broccoli, more broccoli, because I'm now on frozen veg. I've had nothing in my fridge for the best part of a week. So I've been getting by on the frozen veg that I've had in the freezer. These uh, cauliflowers, this is, it's again, it's one of those, it says it's a large cauliflower. It's two smaller ones put together. So it was 99p, 74p for two small ones. And there were loads of these on the shelf. So I bought three of these. So that's going to keep me going for a while. The only really naughty thing I bought today was pork pies. These were £2.50. £2.50 for four snack sized pork pies. What a joke. So these were two fifty down to 75p which was much more like what I would pay for something like that. Um, pickled beetroot. I haven't picked up pickled beetroot in a long time. It's not usually much of a deal but these were 79p down to 20p for a little punnet like that. There's probably about six in there of varying sizes. So I bought two of those because I love beetroot. Um, I also bought uh, Morrison's Moroccan hummus. Uh, that tub was £1.35 down to 54p. So I bought two of those because they make really nice stir fry sauces. And the last thing I've got, I stopped buying carrots for a while because I had so many. And now I'm again reduced to buy to using my freezer ones because I don't have any, haven't had any for a while. So I bought two of these. These were 69p down to 28p. And I don't know what the size is. What's the weight on this? One kilogram. So two kilos of, um, or two kilograms of carrots for 60p, something like that. So that's pretty good. So that's been a good day. Plenty of veg to help keep me going. Still have veg in the freezer. Um, today's lunch is going to be rice with uh, it's smoked haddock. I've got half a smoked haddock. So it's going to be like a poor man's kedgeree. Um, I won't be bothering with the egg or the other ingredients. But it will be a nice rice lunch with broccoli and stock cube. And yeah, really nice. So I'm going to get on with that. And as I say, another gorgeous day. You can tell by the light. It looks really nice outside. Um, but it's now 10 past 12, so half of my Sunday is done. And I'm going to get all of this lot onto my spreadsheet so I know what I've spent and what I haven't spent and what I've saved. And again, I'll, I'll put up there what I would have spent if I'd paid for this. And what I've saved by buying on yellow stickers so you could see it. But I didn't actually pay for this shop. So as I say... Five pounds and a penny. Got one ninety nine left. Perfect. I was waiting to go into Morrison's this morning, and they were opening a bit late. So on Sundays you can go in at nine thirty, and you can browse and you can pick stuff up and stick it in your basket, but you can't actually buy it until ten o'clock because of Sunday trading laws. And I was talking to a lady. We were both standing at the door waiting to go in. She was there with her young daughter. And I said, do you remember the days when nothing opened on a Sunday? And people used to do things like go out and have days out or you'd have a lazy day at home and have a, you know, a Sunday, Sunday lunch. Or you'd go to the pub in the days before pubs sold food and you couldn't take kids into a pub. And uh, so we were just chatting about that and about how things have changed and I said I wouldn't I wouldn't miss it if they took away the Sunday trading and you had to go back to doing real things with real human beings and um, so it's quite funny because when you go in and you go in at 9 30 and you get your bits and pieces and then I like, it usually takes me about 15 minutes so I'm usually standing at the tills for about 15 minutes and there's a bunch of other people that we all go in there uh, you see the same people Sunday at 9.30, the same people are in there looking for their bargains or doing their Sunday morning shop just because it's something to do. So the one, th those of us who do it regularly are just waiting for the lady to come and 
open up the tills and we're just doodling on our phones and stuff. And then you'll get people come in and they'll and they'll they'll have their basket full of stuff and they'll be like, Why aren't the tills open? Why can't I buy anything? And I say it's Sunday trading and they look at you like they have no idea what's going on because a lot of these people don't shop on a Sunday morning. And and then they have to wait and people get so antsy, you know. You <laughs> They've got to stand still for 10 minutes waiting for something and they just can't cope and they're pacing and going backwards and forwards or they'll, um, they'll take their baskets and, and go somewhere else and, and get a bit more shopping or they'll put the item back and they'll leave. It's like people just cannot cope with the concept of having to wait for 10 minutes for something. It's like we don't queue for anything anymore. We don't wait. We have no patience. We just have no patience for anything. Um... You know, I don't get road rage on the roads if I'm stuck in a queue. If you're stuck in a queue, you're stuck in a queue. It's what it is. If you're queuing in the post office, it's a queue. You just gotta, you just gotta wait. And people are so frustrated by having to wait for things, for having to do things the slow way. And I've got used to having my patience again. I mean, I don't get you know, road rage and stuff like that anyway. I'm quite chilled out these days anyway. Um, so I don't really think about it. I mean, I have very slow internet. I don't have streaming services. I don't have anything on demand at all. If I, you know, cooking, I have to do everything from scratch. So I'm used to things taking time and I'm used to just do every, everything in a more gradual way. And so I don't get impatient. I don't have stress levels. I just get on with it. But it was quite funny. It's always funny watching how many people come in and just, you know, it's like they lose their minds because they've got to wait for 10 minutes before they can actually buy their Sunday shop. Anyway, it amuses me anyway. <laughs> Sunday afternoon thoughts. That's it, really. <laughs> See ya. Monday morning. It's not even 9 o'clock and I'm already having issues. Ugh. And good news, my parcel arrived this morning. Uh, but I was taking some photographs of a new set of bracelets that I've made. thought, get started early. I went to bed early last night and I was awake at 7 o'clock. So I thought, great, I'm going to have a really productive day. The weather's not nice, it's really dark out. But, be productive, so... I've uh, I was taking some photographs this morning for a batch of another batch of bracelets that I made over the weekend, and I was halfway through taking the pictures, and suddenly the SD card in my phone bottomed out completely. Now this is the SD card in the phone that I regularly use, not this phone that I use for um, taking videos. I use my regular phone for taking photographs of products because the camera is better. And so this card has just died on me and is still dead on me. And I reg do regularly back up my SD card on my phone just in case something happens because I tend to keep everything on the SD card because I had a 32 gig memory SD card and not a lot of space on the phone like its internal memory I didn't get one with an awful lot of memory and the SD card that's in this phone has 128 gigabyte in it and that used to be in the other phone and then I moved it to this one because this is where I do the recording and that's where all the memory gets eaten up so I tend to keep like photos um, photos that I've taken on the camera but then I will shift them over so like when I go out and hikes most of the photographs I'll take on my other camera because the clarity is better the colors better and then I will shift it across to the folders on my computer where I keep all my YouTube stuff and I file all my photos and things in case I need them again so I haven't lost a lot the most annoying thing I lost was I had screenshotted a few um, supermarket vouchers that I'd earned this year Two of them have managed to retrieve. One of them was the Morrisons one that I started using at the weekend. And one of them was a Tesco's card, which I had partially used. And I managed to find which survey sites they came from and retrieve 
the virtual the digital cards but there's one that I've lost and it's really annoying because for the last week I've been trying to tidy up my um, my external hard drive that came out of my old laptop which I now have um, in a like a separate thing and I've been tidying up because I was terrible for saving pictures and then not remembering if I'd saved them and saving them again and sometimes I found nine or ten copies of an individual photo and I keep everything I have this thing about keeping everything that comes through on my phone or on the laptop it's terrible my dad does it as well and I just keep everything just in case and a lot of it is photographs like family stuff and hikes and all that sort of thing and I keep everything because I think because I do a lot of genealogy I've realized that the imagery the photographs and the documents are incredibly important because at some point they kind of become all that's left of somebody if somebody has died before you so I've scanned huge amounts of genealogical information we have tons and tons of photographs at home and documents and all sorts of things and my concern was what if something happens and we lose all of that so I've digitized everything because it also means that you're not kind of handling originals of photographs and they deteriorate over time and documentation and things so we've got everything filed away but for easy access if I need to just check something or want to pull a picture out or a document I have it all on one hard drive um, for easy access and that means I can do it here because my parents have all the family tree stuff or the original documents <sighs> So that's why I've ended up with so much stuff. And I know that when I've been deleting stuff, I haven't been completely deleting stuff, letting it go into the recycle bin on my laptop. But not everything seems to be in the recycle bin. I think some things where, particularly where files or folders are too big, it's wiping them completely. So I've been going through like screenshots and things a lot the last few days and deleting duplicates, deleting stuff I don't need and filing other stuff away where it should be. And I know that I've had those vouchers and I've deleted them off the main drive and they should be in the recycle bin but they're not so somehow they've been deleted and gone. But it's not too bad because the voucher that I've lost at the most it would have been worth a fiver so it's not a big deal and everything else that was on that card has been backed up somewhere else or is not so important I hope I don't know I have backed up several times already this year so I don't think anything too valuable has gone and the important stuff I'm pretty sure has been backed up Anyway, so that's really frustrating. So I'm going to leave the card in the phone in case it miraculously comes back to life. I've had that happen before. And if it does, then I'll grab everything and download it. But it now means I'm going to have to get a new SD card because um, most of the, well, a few of my applications on my phone I had on my SD card because they just take up too much memory on the phone. So that means I've got three apps on my phone which I now can't use. Um because there's just no room on my phone. So, I'm going to have to drop all the pictures that are on the actual camera off to make some space and hope I can re-add those. And I'm going to have to buy a new SD card because even when that phone goes and I replace that phone, I'm still going to need to have two SD cards um, because I'll need one for the phone, my, old, my, phone, my current actual phone which will become my camera phone which is this phone at the moment and then when I get my new phone that's going to need extra memory now I think that the new phone I'm going to get is the last is going to be the last um, phone model I get where you can insert your own SD cards because they stopped doing it on the recent Samsung phones um, but I'm not buying a new Samsung phone because I can't afford that I'm going to be getting one that's a few years old in terms of the software it'll be a brand new phone but it will be a few years out of date and I can still get the SD cards in there so I'm going to have to buy a new SD card and I don't know when I'm going to be replacing my phone anyway so I need an SD card because I can't 
use my phone without the extra memory. Pain in the backside, I have to say. Um, <laughs> so I've retaken the photos so I can do, I can sort out my um, the photos of my bracelets. And how irritating. Technology, you can never fully trust it. Always back things up. I always back stuff up that's really important. I do regular backups of all my financial spreadsheets and I back them up by emailing them to, my, to myself as attachments um, because that's the only way I can guarantee pretty much that they won't get lost because if something happens to hard drives, everything's lost. You can never fully trust everything. Anyway, so that's my Monday morning ramble. Really frustrating because um, that's just wasted like an hour of my time trying to find files and things and it's really really irritating anyway so i'm going to get back to sorting out these pictures getting them onto my website so that those things are available for sale oh so irritating technology can't always trust it never always trust it Ooh. i forgot to add i also managed to lose two usb charging cables this week no idea where they've gone. It's just going to be one of those weeks, isn't it? You know, things just all kind of cluster together. I should stay in all week and not go anywhere or do anything, I think. <laughs> I was watching somebody complaining about the cost of living on YouTube. Very rare subject these days, don't you think? And she asked, when is the revolution coming? If it hasn't happened by now. I mean, people must have reached their snapping point by now. The problem is that you have this thing called a phone. And people shout into it. They scream, they shout, they cry. They list the problems and the data. And then they post it on the internet. And that is the revolution. The problem is that the people who can make the changes, or help to make the changes, or make things a bit easier, have this thing called an off button and a mute button. And it means that if you are the person in charge, you don't have to listen to it. If you want a revolution, it's going to mean strikes. It's going to mean marching on the street. And we've had it in small chunks. Um, but people tend to give up eventually. I mean, I can remember growing up and some of the riots and stuff that we used to have. Like the bin strikes and things. Unbelievable. But you don't get that anymore. And I suppose you had it more back then because that was the only way people could vent about it. You didn't have the internet back in the 80s and the 70s. So now people just scream into their phones. They post it on the internet. And they think they're starting a revolution. But it really isn't. Because we can hit mute. Or we can shout back. And we're all sitting in our tiny boxes looking at our phones and our laptops, looking on social media and shouting back. And we're basically just in an echo chamber where we are all already preaching to the converted. That's not how it works. Good evening. Look at that terrible light. Got a strobe light thing right in the middle of my face. Anyway, so it's Tuesday evening. Um, this morning I went on a hike. Uh, that will be coming up at some point. Uh, look for the four reservoirs hike. And I knew I had to, I didn't have to, I knew I was probably going to go and do my Tuesday evening clean. But by about four o'clock, I was really tired. So I thought, I'll go anyway. If I don't do it now, I've got to do it tomorrow. And I've got to clean tomorrow during the day anyway. So it's not as if it's not going to have something else happening anyway. So I thought, well, I'm going over to Morrison's anyway. I'll have a look. So I went over, and as I got close, I could see that there was at least one person in the building. And I'm not in the mood for conversation-y type 
things. So I went to Morrison's, did my thing, came out of Morrison's and they're still there. So I thought, you know what, I can't be bothered. So I'm going to go over tomorrow evening and do that. My legs ache. I walked quite a lot today. Um, anyway, so I bought stuff. So I'm going to show you the stuff I bought. Uh, right, so first thing, Nan's Oat Cakes. These are the fine milled ones. Not much of a discount, but these keep in the cupboard really well. So these were a pound down to 75p. Uh, one naughty thing, I bought chocolate chip muffins. These were £1.70 down to 43p. So I'm going to have one of those in a bit with a cup of tea. What else did I get? I have Savers Hot and Spicy Chicken Breast Pieces. This was £2. And... Let's have a look. For some reason, that's scanned in at 70p. I don't know why. It's got a barcode in the front and the back, and I just probably just scanned the front one. So they're lost, not mine. I bought a ham and coleslaw baguette, like I often do, because Wednesday, by the time I get home, it'll be too late for lunch and too early for dinner, so that'll just keep me going. That was £3 down to 75p. And then I bought uh, roast back bacon. They had lots of these things off the deli counter. So roast back bacon. These were £2.78. Or this one was £2.78. Down to 70p. And this one was... Uh, oh. Also £2.78 down to 70p. Even though the actual price on the original deli counter label... One is two seventy eight and one is two pound fifty nine. I think somebody just couldn't be bothered this evening because the barcodes are all over the place. Anyway, so that whole shop cost me four pound three, but I still had the remains of that Morrison's gift card, uh, which had one ninety nine left on it. So I paid two pound four for that shop. That's pretty good. All that meat will keep. Um, it says it can't be frozen, but what I might do is make up some, like, almost like casserole style dishes and then throw that into the freezer because that's too much to keep out in the fridge all at once, I would think. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty good stash there. That means I don't have to dip into the freezer for everything else. So, that's the end of that. Um, that's Tuesday evening over with. Very short and sweet. I'm knackered. I think I'm going to have an early night. I've been... Going to bed at 10 instead of 11 to counteract me waking up at 8.30 and trying to get myself into waking up earlier. And it's working. I'm actually starting to wake up at 7 and then give myself that half an hour to come round. So that seems to be working. And even though I'm going to bed an hour earlier, I don't seem to be struggling to get to sleep. And I think that's partly because the clocks have changed. So... Theoretically, I'm still in the same time frame, so to speak. Anyway, so that's that. Um, that's the end of Tuesday. I took out a library book today. Yeah, you can see that. Um, I've watched him a lot on podcasts and programmes and stuff. Um... And I think this is a better way to be able to change your the diet and the way you see food. So it's not always helpful to just say, well, eat less, it'll make you healthier. Eat less sugar, it'll make you healthier. For me, the weapon is in understanding that the reason a lot of our food is ultra processed is because it keeps us hooked. And if you think of it as supermarkets and manufacturers injecting addictive things into your food to keep you hooked and to keep you parting with your money like an addiction uh, certainly for me anyway it makes me want to push back and say but I don't want to be treated like that I don't want to have the wool pulled over my eyes I don't want to be fleeced of all my money 
and you do that by making food addictive. So um, although I've seen a lot of his stuff on the media, I've decided to get the book out. And also because um, I haven't read a book in ages, I went through a phase just after lockdown where I just went mad on reading books. And I used to read a lot when I was younger, but the internet killed all that. And I want to have some time out where I go, OK, let's put everything down, let's switch off the internet, let's put the phone away and let's read an actual book again. Um, because my, my level of concentration and my ability to focus on something for ages is completely been destroyed by the internet. So, um, new challenge. It's Saturday morning. It's about maybe nine o'clock, might be a little bit earlier. It's nice and quiet out. And I'm walking down to Sainsbury's to get some shopping because I should have gone yesterday or Thursday. And I was really ill yesterday. I got a, a headache, like a menopause hormone headache attack. And it was horrific. It was a constant headache with all the usual fatigue and stuff that comes with the headaches. But I felt incredibly sick as well. The nausea was awful. And I couldn't get out of bed. So I stayed in bed. And I slept on and off. And I got up at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's very disorientating and I still felt dreadful. And I managed to make it to the sofa. And I put the telly on and just kind of laid there. Feeling just as dreadful, but at least I was out of bed. And yeah, I just laid there. And then at about eight o'clock, I could feel the headache just starting to lift. And... Then about nine o'clock, I suddenly started to feel normal again. And by the time I went back to bed at 10 o'clock, it was like I'd never been ill. And that's how fast it can change. My headaches usually last three days. It's a fairly standard cycle for me, but... Um, this one didn't, thankfully, because it was awful. And I know what's caused it. For the last few weeks, I've had a lot of broken sleep. I keep waking up three or four times during the night to go to the loo for no particular reason other than I need to go to the loo. And in the mornings, I've been waking up with a low-level headache most mornings because I haven't had enough sleep. And the three things that trigger my headaches are lack of sleep, dehydration and alcohol. So I always try and drink my two litres of water, which is why I go everywhere with my one litre water bottle. I limit my alcohol. The only time I really drink is when I'm down at my parents. Um, I don't really drink at home. And why I always go to bed at the same time every night and I get up at the same time every morning. And it's why I'd recently changed my sleep pattern from going to bed at 11 to going to bed at 10 because I was struggling to wake up at a sensible time of the morning because of the way the, the daylight hours have changed. So I went to bed last night and again woke up four times. Last time I woke up was at four o'clock in the morning. I was absolutely starving because I hadn't eaten all day because I was so sick or felt so sick. And so I had a, like a really small something just to keep my stomach busy. But I don't know if I went back to sleep again and I got up at seven. So I just need to resolve this sleep issue. 
They say you shouldn't drink anything for two hours before bed if you don't want to wake up during the night. Now I've tried that and it didn't work. But I might have to persevere with it because I didn't really give it much of a shot. So this morning I'm going down to um, Sainsbury's. The joy of feeling well again is happens every time. I'll have these hideous headaches and I won't die. It's just so horrible because you can't escape it. There's nothing you can take. Paracetamol will dull it, but it won't take it away. And ibuprofen, for some reason, doesn't work on these types of headaches with me. Well, I'm going to go down to Sainsbury's, get the things I need, and we're going to have a look and see... Um, I'm going to have a look at their vitamins range. I've never taken vitamins and minerals. I think if you have a balanced diet, you shouldn't need it. But um, I've had people tell me I should take vitamin D. One was from my dentist, funnily enough. And the other was somebody here on YouTube. And I've had a look, and you can actually get them pretty cheaply. Now, that sort of thing is out of my budget, completely. But, because I'm going to Sainsbury's, I can use my nectar points, so it won't actually cost me any money. So I'm going to have a look at that. I'm also going to have a look at... Um, magnesium, because apparently magnesium is good for headaches. So I'm going to have a look at that and see if see if that helps. I'll show you what I can find. We'll see how we get on. All right, I'm back. Back from Sainsbury's. Tired. Maybe I'm not quite as well as I thought I was. Uh, right. So this total shop came to fifteen pounds and seven p. Um, I use Nectar Points because I earn them through two survey sites that I use, details there. And so that means that I spent 7p on this shop. So let's have a look at what I got. I bought greens. Greens are 75p, there's a lot in there. I bought vegetable oil. I don't go through a lot of vegetable oil, um, but I always keep one in stock. And I'm about halfway through, the only one I've got that came to one ninety nine, and that will last me a few months probably. I bought a bottle of tonic water, uh, which was eighty five p. Gin won't dilute itself. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of gin at home, but I have a couple of bottles here from gifting. So every so often, I like a little tipple. I bought my usual fair trade bananas, which were 78p. And I bought potatoes, because I ran out of potatoes about five days ago. These are the white potatoes. These were £1.35. And the reason I bought the tomatoes, I wasn't going to bother, but I needed to get the amount up to reach the £15 limit so I could get the next points. These are, how much were these? These were 95p. And then I went and had a look at the vitamins and stuff and I bought a couple of things. So, vitamin D. These are the max strength ones. A 60 there, so that's um, two months supply. And that came to four pounds. And I also bought magnesium because I've heard that the magnesium is good to help with the headaches. So maybe I'm a bit low on magnesium as well, who knows. Um, these are also one a day and they're 60, so again, that's two months supply. These came to £4.40. 
So that's £8.40 just for that, which is ridiculous. I would never normally buy this sort of thing. If I was paying actual money for this, I wouldn't be buying them. I can't afford stuff like this. So when people say, oh, you should take this, oh, you should take that, have you thought about HRT? No, costs money. But because I've got these on nectar points, that's why I've got them. So I'm going to start taking these today, and we'll see how we get on with that. And that's it. That is my shop. It cost me 7p, so that's pretty good. Um, it's only just after 10 o'clock. Uh, I do feel a bit tired now. That was a heavy bag of shopping to carry all the way home. And got a load of steps in. Didn't do anything yesterday, obviously. Uh, that's half my step count for the day, just going to Sainsbury's and back. So I'm going to have a bit of a sit down. I need to sort all this shopping out. And then um, that's it. I have to say, the packaging for this is a joke. When I look inside, I don't know if you can see that, look. They only just cover the bottom of this packaging. They could have made that packaging that big. And instead, they've made this whopping great package to justify the price. And literally, look, there's almost nothing in there. What's the matter with these people? And the other one's the same. Half full. They could have really reduced the plastic on that. What a waste. It really bugs me. Today is Sunday the 3rd of November. And despite the cost of living crisis, last night sounded like we were in a war zone. There were so many fireworks going off. There were so many... I don't know if there were displays, I think they were probably in people's gardens, most of them. But there probably were a couple of displays. And my thought was that, you know, despite the cost of living crisis, you could hear thousands and thousands of pounds going up in smoke. Anyway, so that's over with. Um, although we've had fireworks going off for the last week, and I'm sure they'll be going off for at least another week yet. They do like to let off their fireworks. We have a fireworks shop here in town, so of course there's no stopping them. Anyway, so it's quite early. It's only 11 o'clock. And I was up early and went and did my clean early. I did most of the cleaning. Then I went to Morrison's, um, which opened at 9.30. Came back, finished my clean, and now I'm back here with my shopping. So... Today I spent £1.67, wasn't very much in, a lot of what was on, certainly the refrigerated counter shelves, they're just not discounts, you know, if you're going to buy a discount, if your chicken has gone up to, I don't know, fiver for a box and you're still going to pay £2.50 for a box, I'm going to go without, anyway, so I bought a few things, there wasn't very much there, almost nothing in the veg aisle in fact i think i got almost the only thing that was there which was uh a broccoli um this was 69p it's two very small ones stuck together it was 69p down to 21p so that's good i also got a dented tin of peas dented tins nobody wants the dented tins these were 56p down to 28 not a massive bargain cannot remember the last time i ate peas that's for sure um, more hummus. This is um, just a standard hummus. This was £1.35 down to 68p. And those chickpeas are good for you. And big tub of coleslaw. Haven't had coleslaw in a while, I don't think. This was £1.65 down for 50p. And that is the sum of my Sunday shop. I have quite a lot in at the moment though, so I'm not going without. I've been to Morrison's and Sainsbury's this week and we did quite well. And that's pretty much it. And I think I'm probably going to finish up this vlog entry with this. Um, it's not been a particularly busy week. I did a hike um, for reservoirs, which will be coming up, I think, after this video. So enjoy that. And there's some other bits and pieces I've had some thoughts on various other things so if you're following my channel anyway and you're subscribed you'll see those come up in your in your subscribed feed um 
that's about it really it's been budget week not really going to talk about the budget I don't think there's anything I could possibly add um, it's not surprising it's good things bad things veiled by good things so for instance you know putting up the minimum wage uh, changing the carers allowance but not putting up the personal allowance on income which means all those low-income workers who are getting a raise in the, um, the minimum wage next year will probably lose a lot of it in tax anyway so they give with one hand and they take it away with the other which is no surprise um, yeah that's about it really that's almost all I have to say about that so I'm not going to say any more that's it so as usual I will put up the full price if I pay full price for those things and the savings that I made I've recently made a video about what I saved across my October shop uh, really as a demonstration for that it is worth the effort so a lot of people say oh it's not worth the effort scrabbling around the shops at XYZ time looking for a few bargains L watch that video because and I'll link it at the end here because they are huge savings they are massive savings on the ridiculous price of food these days so it's worth going and having a look um, I don't know if that video is coming up before or after this I'll try and make it come up before and then I can link it at the end and then you can go straight to it if you haven't seen it already so I hope you're having a good weekend or whatever you're doing when you're watching this and I'll catch up with you again soon bye bye